VHC vitamin D test components provided to perform quantitative vitamin D measurements. VHC reader, three button cells, adapter, VHC vitamin D test cassettes, unisampler, sample buffer, and lot specific RFID card. You also need safety lancet, disinfectant, swabs, and if you decide to do perform time measurements by your own, a timer. For the first start of the VHC reader, please place the three button cells provided into the meter. You may also use the VHC reader with the optional data reader USB adapter cable to store or access data and to configure the device via a PC. Also, the data reader cable allows you to ensure permanent power supply via USB, limiting the frequency of battery replacements. This is quite useful if you use the built-in timer of the VHC reader frequently. After any battery replacement, the internal date setting must be checked. To check and set the internal date and time, press the button of the VHC reader twice in rapid succession right after the device has passed its self-test and the display shows on. The display will switch and show the currently stored date in the sequence year, month, day, hour, and minute. Accurate date setting is important in order to control whether the test cassette has reached its expiration date. Press the control button long to change the current date settings. At first, you have to set the year. Press the button shortly to increase the number of the year by one. To confirm the new setting of the year, press the button long. Now you may change the month and day settings by following the same principle. Press the button short to change plus one. Press long to confirm. Finally, you may set the time, hours and minutes. In case the reader display shows the battery warning icon, change the batteries before starting the next measurement. Or supply the VHC reader with power via the data reader USB connector cable. If you frequently run the VHC reader in timer mode, it might happen that you don't notice the battery warning symbol is showing up during countdown, because you come back only after the countdown is finished to read the quantification results. Thus, in case you frequently use the timer mode, it is recommended to ensure permanent power supply via the data reader cable. After setting the date, you are now ready to run a first test. Make sure the subject's hands are thoroughly cleaned and dried thereafter. Now remove a test cassette from the sealed bag and place it on a stable surface. Next, prepare one unisampler device for sampling. Open the sample buffer bottle and check that its outlet is bladder free. Place exactly five full drops of sample buffer into the collection tube of the unisampler. Clean the previously warmed finger of the test person with a disinfectant. Note the action time recommended. For optimal blood flow in the finger, your subject should stand up with its hand hanging down. Place a safety lancet at the side of the fingertip and perform the finger prick. Wait for a first small blood drop to form. Remove the first drop using a swab to prevent early wound closure. Wait until the second blood drop has achieved a size of about two to three millimeters to ensure the capillary of the blood collector can be filled in one go. If necessary, press the finger lightly to promote blood flow. Make sure not to squeeze or milk the finger as this might cause dilution of vitamin D in the sample by leaking tissue fluid. Touch the blood drop slightly oblique with the capillary of the blood collector so that it fills in one go. Check for full and bubble-free filling of the capillary in order to ensure the sample volume is exactly correct. Now insert the blood collector with the end-to-end -end filled capillary onto the prepared collection tube. Make sure the uni sampler is closed tightly. To deplete the sample from the capillary, you must perform energetic semicircle movements and thus generate a centrifugal force pushing the sample directly into the sample buffer. Then mix well. Note, simply shaking the unisampler will not result in a complete discharge of the blood from the capillary. The energetic movements generate a centrifugal force directed to the bottom of the unisampler, which pulls the sample effectively out of the capillary and directly into the buffer. Check the result in transmitted light. Evenly mixed? Repeat mixing until this is achieved. Always check your result in transmitted light. The centrifugal force must pull the sample out of the capillary and into the sample buffer before it absorbs liquid again. Complete mixing is achieved once the liquid in the capillary appears to be stained weaker than the pre-mix at the bottom of the collection tube in translucent light. 
Once the premix is completed, make sure that all liquid is combined in one drop at the bottom of the collection tube. Remove the cap of the blood collector covering the sample outlet. Make sure the sample outlet is bladder free. Place three full drops of the premix on the sample inlet S of the test cassette. Make sure there is sufficient distance to the surface in order to avoid the drop tears off prematurely. The 15 minutes reaction time until readout begins immediately after the premix is dropped on the cassette. There are two options to perform the measurement. One, measurement of the reaction time with your own timer and subsequent readout using the iDirect mode of the VHC reader. Two, use the timer mode of the VHC reader with automatic measurement at the end of the 15 minute reaction time. For variant one, own timer and immediate mode of the VHC reader set your timer to 15 minutes. For variant two, timer mode of the VHC reader, place the adapter over the test cassette. Control for correct alignment according to the pictograms. Place the VHC reader in the right direction on top of the adapter. Turn it on by pressing the button shortly. After a self-test, the VHC reader shows on. Timer mode can now be activated by pressing the button long until the display switches and shows RFID. Verify the lot numbers of the test packaging and the RFID card are the same. Place the RFID card on top of the VHC reader. A beep tone confirms the data transfer is completed. The display will show test. Press the button again. The 15 minute countdown is shown on the display. At the end of the countdown, the display shows run and the measurement is performed automatically. In variant one, measurement with your own timer and VHC reader in direct mode, perform these steps exactly after 15 minutes. Place adapter on the test cassette. Place VHC reader on top of the adapter. Check for correct orientation. Turn on the VHC reader by briefly pressing the button. After the self-test, the device shows on. To start measurement, press the button shortly, maximum one second. The device shows RFID. Make sure the lot numbers of RFID card and test cassette are matching. Place the RFID card on top of the VHC reader. A beep tone confirms the data transfer was successful. The display shows test. Press the button again shortly. Instead of a countdown, the reader shows run and performs the quantification. In both variants, the quantification results appear on the display. A relative vitamin D level, level one to six is displayed. See evaluation table on page one of the instructions for use. Quantitative results are shown in nanogram per milliliter and in nanomole per liter. Results can be saved by a long press of the button. The VHC reader turns off after 50 seconds. In timer mode, results are saved automatically. If you turn the device on again, the last saved measurement results will show up in the display.